welcome back. Well, it was a bullish week on the FX commodity market summary for the weekend at the 4th of April 2022. Most of the parameters closed in the green, except for the total turnover, which dipped by over 36%. We have Femi Kainde, structuring and originating analyst with Apex joining us with the details. Hello, Femi. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So let's have a rundown of activities on the exchange for the week ended. Yeah, so for the reporting week, we actually saw a drop in the value traded to, to about 0.72 billion naira. Um, which represented a 36 percentage decline week on week. For the volume trader, we actually saw a significant increase to about 2.1 million, one million, era con one million contracts executed on the exchange, which represented a 11.91 percentage increase week on week. For the number of deals, we saw a significant surge of about 61.36 percent represent week on week as 401 deals were executed and for the financial benchmarks on the exchange we saw a marginal uptick in the apex commodity index and a significant surge in the apex export index closing the week with a 3.44 percentage increase week on week for the value for the volume traded across commodities we actually we actually saw the trade of um, maize contract soybean contract paddy rice contract sorghum cocoa and ginger contracts on the exchange. Uh, in terms of commodities prices, maize actually um, experienced a surge compared to the previous week, closing at closing with a 2.65 percentage increase week on week, as maize closed the week with with 240 naira per contract. For paddy rice, paddy rice actually closed the week at 252 naira per contract, representing a 4.3 percentage increase week on week. So soybean closed the week at 403 naira per contract, representing a 1.33 percentage increase week on week. Um, however, Sogom actually followed a negative trend or an opposite trend, um, closing the week at 226 naira per contract, representing a 0.02 percentage decline. Coco also followed a similar trend, closing at 1,221 naira per contract, representing a 1.27 percentage decline. And Cashew closed the week at 600 naira per contract, representing a 0.04 decline week on week. For more information about our report, you could actually go to our website at www.afxnigeria.com or you could follow us on our social media handles at afxnigeria.com or at Comex by Afex. Yes, yeah, so Femi, I'm sure uh, with uh, all of these figures, especially the gains for the week, some investors will want to gain exposure to the space. How do they do that? Yeah, so I believe onboarding on Apex is the cheapest and most easiest way to gain um, um, exposure on the commodities market. So the easiest thing to do would be to onboard on the exchange and fill the required um, KYC documents. Also, it will be important for you to attend um, our regular seminars to, of which we organize to educate the public about the commodity space and current happenings in the commodity space. Also, it would be amazing for you to read our commodities report uh, on our website. We have diverse reports co covering diverse commodities, covering diverse states, covering the dynamics um, that, have, uh, that actually um, affects the pricing of these commodities during the um, seasonal period. So yes, it's and advisable to onboard on the exchange. All right. And what factors should they consider before investing in commodities? Yes, yeah, so there's there are quite some important factors to look at before investing into commodities. Uh, so the first would be the demand supply dynamics. It will always be it's always important for you to understand what actually fosters demand and what is the nature of supply in the country. Uh, and this also dovetails into the um, government policy. How does government policy at the end of the day affect the pricing of these commodities? Or how does it affect the supply of these commodities in the local economy? So it's important to also have or keep abreast with government policies. It's also important for you to understand the production cycle. Um, unlike um, developed countries, Nigeria is usually a two seasonal product cycle where we have the dry season, which does not really produce as much um, or produce the volume to which we need. And we have the wet season, which accounts for a significant proportion of what we consume the next year. So it will always be nice for you to, for an investor to understand that dynamics, understand the production cycle. It will also very it's also very important to understand some weather factors, um, how does weather actually affect these commodities, where are the key producing regions, et cetera, and et cetera. So 
And on AFX, we actually provide weekly seminars or periodic seminars to which we, we try to engage the market. We try to educate them on how the fundamentals of the commodities market work, what are the recent happenings and the recent developments. So yes, those are the key factors I believe one should understand before engaging into the commodity space. All right, Femi Kende, thank you so much. Uh, structuring and originating analysts with AFX, thank you so much uh, for the market thank analysis. While still staying on Apex now, uh, a lot has happened in the commodity space in the first quarter, which just ended. Uh, food inflation, demand supply imbalance appear to be widening as a result of a variety of factors. And, and of course, that's including the Russia-Ukraine crisis, which is still ongoing, unfortunately. Reviewing recent developments in key commodity markets and analyzing the factors that contribute to fluctuations in commodity prices in the first quarter would help in adjusting to new realities, especially in the second quarter. We have David Ibidakbo, Senior Research Analyst at AFEX, joining us for that conversation. Good morning, David. Uh, good morning, Ine. Yeah. Nice so how did, good, good to have you here, too. So how did the key commodities perform so far? And um, what are the potential impacts on food security uh, when we look at some of those parameters uh, that are considered? Um, yeah. Um, so, from the start of the season to date, um, we've seen we've seen some form of rally um, across major grain commodities like maize, uh, which returned about 40 percent. Um, um, paddy rice, which which is doing about 15 percent. Um, soybean about 12 percent, and um, sorghum, which is uh, which has returned about 6 percent. So, for investors, it has been a good run. Uh, for investors that are exposed to these commodities, it has been a good run for them. However, for households. Um, um, you understand that um, when prices of commodities like that are rising and there are no, there's no corresponding increase in income levels, right, uh, it increases um, their woes, right, and uh, puts, um, um, reduces their purchasing power. So um, that's the case um, that we are seeing currently as um, also that currently uh, groaning under the, 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 the increases or the spikes that are seen across commodities, um, even in the open market, right? And also, if you look at the outlook for these commodities, um, especially when you, when you put into consideration the, um, the event that's happening in the global space, which is the crisis between the Russia and Ukraine, um, Russia, between Russia and Ukraine, and the effect on fertilizer prices and also the effect on wheat prices, which are major pass-throughs to Nigeria, you understand that the um, the, the outlook is actually bleak, and um, we, are, we, should, we should see a possible pressure on food inflation going forward, right? And, um, and we know that when we talk about food security, we are speaking to affordability and availability of, this, of these commodities, right? So when prices continue to rally, um, it's not really a good one for households. And, um, it's, and if we don't have um, policies that would kind of stem or ameliorate the effect of, of these um, shocks in the global space and other shocks that we are seeing in the domestic space, um, we, may, we may see further rally across these prices. What are the current requirements in areas which have been termed deficient? Uh, would this be, uh, can we say that uh, food scarcity is a problem at this time? Yeah, obviously, uh, food scarcity would always be a problem um, if not addressed, right? Um, because um, if you look at um, across our major um, major commodities that that actually stand as um, major staples consumed um, in, in Nigeria, like maize, soybean, paddy rice, sorghum, we've not been able to close that um, demand supply gap, right? Um, so for most of the commodities, we still have um, demand and um, production levels under performing consumption levels. Levels, except for some commodities like paddy rice, which we've been able to at least spur production um, to levels that, that meet up its consumption levels, right? And so this, this speaks to, to, to some of the um, areas that, that I would say um, needs to be addressed. And that's, we must be intentional in, in spurring production levels. And that also speaks to some of the challenges that the farmers face, which is more to um, access to finance, access to um, affordable inputs, 
right? Because one of the challenges that we may face um, this year is the fact that um, there may not be affordable imputer for farmers to 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 pay because of the old rally and uh, fertilizer prices, right? And if 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 we don't solve these very underlining and um, fundamental challenges, we would continue to uh, it will continue to affect food um, Nigeria's food security, uh, which is very very key. We need to actually support that levels and also when we talk about some other bottlenecks in the in the in the agricultural value chain, it has to also be fixed, and that's one one aspect that FX is really really playing um, um, key 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 attention to, and also seeing how we can um, uh, ameliorate those um, bottlenecks in the in, in the food system of Nigeria. Yeah, but we do have uh, government policies, you know, that's supposed to affect and enhance, you know, this food production. How is that going, from your perspective? Yeah, so I would say that the intention of the government is quite clear and um, um, the intention has largely revolved around two basic objectives, um, to spot production levels and also to stem um, the pressure on prices of commodities um, generally. And we've seen that over the years uh, with some level of, um, um, I will explain, with some level of, of, of growth um, in this sector. Um, so I think one, one, one of the most recent uh, policies that I would like to point to is um, the CBN's um, Brown Revolution. Um, which, which, which tries to, which sp um, speaks to improving um, wheat production um, domestically um, by the decision is about 41.2 billion naira to um, spur the production of wheat um, um, in Nigeria. But if you look at it, so spurring the production of wheat um, by adding additional 750,000 metric tons to current levels around 55,000 metric tons um, is a far cry when it comes to, um, when, we, when we look at uh, what national consumption is at around 5.5 million metric ton, which means over the years we've actually imported um, to cover this gap, right? And um, in the light of the Russian-Ukraine crisis, um, it's, 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 it's very important for us to spoil it even faster than that, right? Um, I, think, I think one of the things that we just need to um, improve on as, um, as, as the federal government and also even private um, players in the, in, in the space is to be proactive, right? Um, that's pro proactive, yes. Because um, if you look at it now, um, we are currently going to be reeling from the um, effect of the Russia-Ukraine crisis on commodities prices because there is a lot of shift in demand now, right? To move to other staples like rice, um, soybean, and the rest, which will continue to pressure prices, right? So I think it's a step towards the right direction from the part of the government, but we need to intensify. The journey is too far, and we need to also. Um, create um, a, a situation where we have to leverage on even private sector, even like the um, like FS Commodities Exchange, to boost um, food security, to boost um, availability and also aff affordability of these commodities. All right, uh, David Bidako, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. I know the government is listening and uh, we also need to ensure that there's food security uh, in the nation. David Bidako, Senior Research Analyst with effects enjoy the rest of your day thank you very much just before we head to the markets we'll take a break a short one and we'll be back <laughs>